a beautiful start to the day. Joining us from Salem, she is an author and uh, just recently had her book, uh, an option signed for it by Disney. The, the book is Hook's Revenge, and Heidi Scholes joins us on the wake-up call this morning. Hi, Heidi. Hi, good morning. Welcome to uh, the wake-up call this morning. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll get to the fact that you're deathly afraid of giraffes in a moment. <laughs> All right. Um <laughs> Thanks for joining us. How long have you been writing, anyway? Um, I have been telling stories my whole life. I was the kid at the slumber party that would tell the really scary story and then keep myself awake all night while everyone else fell asleep. So you convinced yourself of your own stories. Yeah, yeah. Sign of a good storyteller. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to entertain myself with stories. Just, um, I mean, scary, or do you kind of... Oh, all kinds. That, all okay. kinds, but funny. I, I, like, I like a lot of humor. Hook's Revenge is very funny, so... Um, but I started writing. I've been blogging since 2006, and so I was doing a lot of writing in that way, although very different, not fiction. Um, and, but I started writing this book actually about eight years ago. I had the idea for it, and um, my I had the flu, and my daughter was young. I wasn't able to just go to bed, so I had let her watch movies while I slept on the couch, and she watched Hook with Robin Williams and um, the 2003 live-action mm -hmm. Peter Pan. And while I was sleeping, I sort of listened to these movies, and when I woke up, I thought, what if Captain Hook had a daughter? And every good story starts with a what if. And um, I just started playing around with that idea. And then I put it on the shelf for several years. We, we were living in Maryland at the time. We moved back home here to Oregon. Um, I started homeschooling my daughter, and I just didn't really have the, have the time to devote to actually finishing the story and, and seeing what I could do with it until about the beginning of 2012. That's when I became really serious about finishing it up. So Was it kind of a daunting idea doing this? I mean, because after all, you're dealing with J.M. Barry's classic of Peter Pan, I, I mean, did you kind of go, hmm? Well, I wonder. I wonder what Barry would think of this. I have asked myself that question a few times. I am a huge fan of the original J. M. Barry story, the the original Peter Pan and Wendy, and the Little White Bird, which has the um, Peter Pan chapters in in that as well. And it was really important to me that this book. Um, sort of fit in that universe. There are lots of Peter Pan retellings and reimagination re reimaginings that go all over the place, and I think that those are those are amazing and exciting. Um, there was one that came out just this summer that I haven't read yet, but that has Peter Pan and the Lost Boys as surfers, and I think that those are all really <laughs> cool. Um, but it was important for me to write yeah, something. Wendy, yeah, Wendy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't read it yet, but I've heard good things about it. Um, but it was important for me to write something that actually fit in that universe, that um, fit in the world that he created. So I worked hard to to get the details right, and I really immersed myself in those original books. Who did you who did you either model the character out from or to anybody? Or at this point, if if you were to do like a movie, who would you think would be a, a good person to play Jocelyn? Well, someone asked me that before, and I said that if there was a movie, I think that Peter Dinklage should be do it as a one man show for everyone. Just <laughs> that could be awesome. <laughs> the, I like it. I yeah. pay for that. Um, it's hard. To, it's hard to to come up with an ideal movie cast for a, a middle grade. I don't really know kid actors that well, but. Um, but I'm sure if there is Jocelyn you. Um, parts of her are me. Parts of her are my daughter. But a lot of it is just her. I just had this image of a character show up in my head, and and um, and it was amazing to write her and and see how she came to life. So. Yeah, um, there there are certainly a few scenes that were inspired by my life. There, Jocelyn starts out in the beginning of the book in finishing school. She's being forced to become a lady and learn how to be a fine society lady. Um, where she wants no part of that at all. She wants her father to come and and take her away on an adventure. She's Captain Hook's daughter. She wants him to take her away, and um, she she does not like that at all. And there is a scene that was inspired by my own experience as a sixth grader. Um, the girls at the school aren't very nice to Jocelyn, and, and at one point she finds a bunch of notes in her pocket telling her that she no one likes her and that she, she um, should just leave and that she's stupid and all of these things. And, and something very similar happened to me as a sixth grader, um, I mean, 
notes in my pocket. I still remember one, and I think actually now it's really clever. I was totally burned by grammar because the note said, Dear Heidi, and, and my name wasn't capitalized. And it said, mm-hmm. Please notice that I didn't capitalize your name because you were a common noun and not important, which is terribly mean and hurtful. But at the same time, as an adult now, I can appreciate the cleverness of that mean child to <laughs> burn me with grammar. So. <laughs> Wow. So, so that certainly. Uh, have you wanted to hunt that person down and go? You were very <laughs> clever, and by the way, I have the Disney option. Well, perhaps they are listening to it now. Yeah, it was published by Disney Hyperion. It hasn't been optioned for film yet, but but perhaps it will be one day. But um, if, yeah, maybe maybe you're listening. If you're listening, um, you should be a writer. That was that was great. <laughs> that was, wow, that was that's a pretty good cool. Word, but be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Heidi Schultz, by the way, in in studio. Out of curiosity, to start the story, did you have to get any? kind of permission? No, because um, Peter Pan is in the public domain. So 70 years after an author of a work dies, um, it goes into the public domain and you can you can do pretty much what you want with it. So there were some considerations. It's, it's being published by um, Chicken House in the UK, another publisher in the UK in March. And um, we did need to make sure that public domain laws were the same, same in, in there as they are here. But yeah, it, it was fine. So... Have you have you had anybody uh, read it and go? And when I say anybody, I'm talking about you know folks in the literary world or the like, or even I know there's a number of people that actually study Barry. Uh, anybody say, "Wow, you you really nailed Barry's characters really well." Actually, yes. One of my good friends, we we share an agent. Her name is Becky Albertalli, and she has a book coming out next year. Um, Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda is is the name of her book, oh. and she did her um, thesis on J. M. Barry, her college thesis, um, and she said that it was incredibly well researched, and she loves it so. Yeah, um, that was a great day for me when she emailed me that. So how did Disney even come across it? I have an agent, and so after I finished the book and and we did a little bit of revising together to make sure it was ready to show to editors, he sent it to 15 different editors, and um, five of them were interested. It actually sold at auction. I had five different houses bidding on it, which at the time, being new to the industry, I thought, oh, well, that's really nice, but probably happens all the time. Apparently, five house auctions are pretty rare, so um, that, that was pretty exciting. Disney had the highest bid, and we also really, um, felt that it was the best fit for a Peter Pan story, so we were really excited that that they were the one that um, we decided to work with. So, so if you'd never been published before, how did you end up with an agent that was able to put you in a position where you've got people fighting over your book? Well, I finished. The, I, I I worked on the book and got to a point where I felt that it was it was finished. Um, although I did end up revising more after signing with an agent, but um, I went to writers conferences and I researched online and I figured out how to get an agent. You have to write a, a query letter, a letter of introduction, basically describing your your work and there's a particular format to it there's kind of an art to writing a query letter you want it to be just a one-page letter um, that will really capture their attention it's sort of like writing um, cover copy or you know the Mm -hmm. flap copy of a book you want to get their attention and get them to want to request and read the rest of your book so I sent out several query letters and had some interest and in the end I had two agents offer to represent me and I I was able to choose between the two. How did you hook up with uh, illustrator John Hendricks was that somebody that was basically kind of mandated or do you get a a choice how does Um, that work the disney hired john hendrix but i am so glad they did send me his portfolio and my editor sent me his portfolio and said this is the illustrator that we're looking at we really like him what do you think and i took a look at his artwork and was just blown away i thought that it was amazing um typically in publishing cover art and title are solely up to the publisher's discretion i mean i did i did title it hooks revenge but if they had hated it they could have said hey we're changing the title you know and, and they'd ask for input but title and cover are really sort of the publisher's domain so um they were very good to send me his initial sketches 
and um, let me give input on those as well, though. So that was great. They sent me the sketches. There's also five pieces of interior art, um, and they sent me sketches for all of those and made sure that John had read it, but they made sure that the details were right. There were a few things, like in one picture, I said, well, she wouldn't have shoes on in this at this point in the story, and they, he was able to go back and make changes to make sure that it was perfect and lined up with the text. So when you so, told him, oh, she shouldn't have shoes on in this particular point, did, did you get one of... <sighs> Okay, Heidi. Actually, you get one of those. No, but conversation. All all of the conversation went through our editor, so I doubt that he responded that way because they were pencil sketches at that time. And I have gotten to know John a little bit since, and he is um, an amazing artist and a perfectionist himself. So I think he was pro he would probably be pretty glad to get all the details right. All right. So you've got a book signing today. Uh, actually, just about an hour and twenty minutes away from now, ten o'clock at Barnes and Noble, right? Yeah. All right. And how long are you going to be over there? Um, I, I'll, I'll probably hang around for about an hour. So, yeah, come down and see me. I'll stay till 11. All right. Barnes & Noble, and that's the Valley uh, River location just right down the street from us. So, and I'm You should maybe come, um, but not if you're a giraffe. Right. Yeah. Not if you're a giraffe. You don't like giraffes. I do not like giraffes. Um, <laughs> when I was very young, I was. this is probably my earliest memory. I was only three. I went to the zoo with my family. My grandma had come to visit and had given me a little Cupid doll. And I have eight brothers and sisters. I didn't get presents very often for no reason. So I, I loved the doll. I was very excited about it. And we went over to the giraffe pen, and a giraffe just it took that long neck right over the edge of the, the fence and stuck its long purple tongue out and just popped the head right off my doll. So I, I And did it eat it? it? It held it for a few minutes. My dad's not very tall. He's he's about 5'3", so he was reaching as high as he could to try to get it back. My This was the 70s. My mom had a giant final purse, big pur red purse she was banging on the fence with, and it finally spit the doll's head out. And the last thing I remember is this head sort of rocking um, on the ground, turning to where the eyes were looking up at me. It was covered in giraffe spit, and that was the day I I decided that I hated giraffes, and I'm not really crazy about dolls either. They sort of freak me out. So. <laughs> kind of all done in one so, so yeah. really, the giraffe pretty much destroyed your life um, I, as a kid. It, you know, it, it's worked out pretty well because I do have a picture book coming out in 2016 called Giraffes Ruin Everything. So in a way, that giraffe has, <laughs> has, um, has helped further my career as a writer. So, you know, pain... Pain is always good for art, right? Yeah. <laughs> how, how did how did things change for book two as opposed to book one? I mean, now that you're you've got you know Disney kind of behind you, is um, it do, easy? Do you mean for the sequel to Hook's for, Revenge? Well, no, for the for the picture book or the, for pretty much. The picture book is with Bloomsbury, so it's it's not with Disney Hyperion. But I do have. But I mean, you've got you've got some pull now that you've got. You I, I I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. I I sold the picture book just shortly after I had sold the um the book to Disney Hyperion, so it was actually to one of the editors that. Um, had lost in the auction, so I had she had read Hook's Revenge and had wanted to to purchase that, but um, you know we can't can't send right. it to every publisher. So I was really glad to be able to get a chance to work with her on a different project. So so that was great, but um, I hadn't hadn't really um, my name wasn't out there very much at the time. So it sort of happened simultaneously, just about. And very briefly here, uh, you have a sequel that's going to be coming out as well. Yes. It, it, Hook's Revenge, The Pirate Code, comes out next September. I've been working on it all um, furiously all summer. And, um, yeah, it's 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 a great book. It's exciting. So I'm, I'm right. well, ready to have that out there. Heidi Schulz, uh, author of Hook's Revenge. And again, the book signing today, Barnes & Noble, Valley River location, just uh, right down the street. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me this morning. Our pleasure. It is 842 News Radio 1120 KPNW.